Good evening, fellow programmers. This is Pavel, and this is part three of uh, our app for the student Paul, uh, which is the chapter 17, exercise 8 from C Sharp, how to program book. Uh, we So far, we have our form ready to uh, that loads the file the, with the responses, it displays it, and uh, it uh, we have a logic that uh, initializes uh, the form which unchecks all the radio buttons and the uh, drop-down menu. So uh, now let's uh, record a new answer. Basically, user will select its rating and clicks record answer, and we want to record it into our text file. So I'll double-click record answer, button button click record click, and um, remember we have drop-down menu and the radio buttons which do the same thing. Let me repeat one more time. You would have only one or the other in a real life application, but this is just for demonstration purposes. However, I have to prevent the user from, uh, in our case, from using both uh, ratings kind of engines or both rating things. Uh, you cannot uh, select one thing here and another here and click record answer because you won't know which one to record in the first place. So we need to make sure that the user only uses one of the options to actually <coughs> to actually uh, uh, record the answer. So uh, first things first, what we're gonna do is a simply an if statement. We will simply check if uh, anything is being selected in the uh, drop-down menu. So we will do if cmb rating dot selected index not equals negative uh, one. Negative one index means that nothing is selected. If it is not negative one, it means something from the drop down menu is selected. So uh, if that's selected and any of the buttons is clicked, then uh, we will display a message uh, that you cannot vote using you know both uh, systems. Now the question is, uh, how do we find out if any of the button is clicked? I mean, we could go obviously one by one and see if any of those buttons is checked. But uh, what we can also do, if you uh, if you click on any of these uh, uh, these buttons, obviously they will get selected. So we can actually uh, capture if any of these buttons was clicked. If it was, it will get selected. So. Uh, we can do, uh, uh, let me just create, a, if I click on all of them, or one of them at a time, actually maybe I can select them all. And I will go to our, let me see, let me spray it out so you can see it. Normally it would go to checked change, but uh, that basically means whether it's checked or unchecked. We only want to see if any of them was checked. We don't care if it was unchecked, because when we are uh, re recording the answer or displaying the results, we are actually uh, clearing all of them. So they, the, if any of them was checked, they will get unchecked, and it would be this event would be triggered. We only care if any of them was actually selected or basically clicked. So I select all of them, go to a click, and I will do. Uh, radio button clicked event. It's in the uh, events with the uh, with the sign that looks like a like a lightning. So uh, I selected all of them. So they all will use this event radio button clicked. And in it, uh, if any of those buttons was clicked, I will return true. But this is a void. It cannot be uh, a boolean. So I'm gonna create up here a boolean. Uh, well, let's make it private uh, boolean, uh, and I'll call it uh, radio button clicked, and I'll initialize it to false. So now, if any of those buttons was clicked, this event is triggered, and I will set the radio button clicked equals true. I think I misspelled something. Radio button clicked over here. 
there. So again, if any of those buttons click, this is uh, uh, returning true. So I can come over here when I go to the button record and I can do, so if uh, any item is selected from the drop down and also the uh, radio button clicked is true in other words one of those was clicked then we have a problem this is uh, not acceptable because we cannot have two uh, two votes one from the drop down and one from the radio button so uh, I will simply do message box dot show as you cannot vote using both the drop down and radio buttons and when we do that we display the message we will call the initialize controls because we want to unselect everything so initialize controls and we can we'll have a clear screen uh, well not clear screen but all the radio button will be unchecked and the uh, the drop down will be unchecked as well. I mean, any uh, data uh, displayed in our list box or text box here will be still there. So, um, all right, let's test it. So, if I run it and um, let's say I select something from here, I select, I click record, I saw nothing happening, so that's good. But if I click this one as well, and click record answer I got a message you cannot be vote using both the drop down and buttons and when I click OK it, uh, this should be all unselected again and it is so if I do this uh, select both of them again I get the you cannot vote using both the drop down if I select only one nothing is happening only if I select both Oh, it actually records even if only one of them is uh, selected. Let me check that. If I do uh, a record answer, that should not be there. And I think I know why. The uh, We have the uh, flag that's uh, uh, the radio button clicked that is being set to true, but it remains true. It's never unset. So I have to come to initialize controls and add that to it. So I do radio button clicked equals now false I have to initialize it as well back to the original false state all right so now we have the uh, uh, the system that prevents user from using both drop down and the radio buttons so if everything is okay which is our else statement over here we can start recording the answer. So I will create a variable record. I'll set it to zero. And now we need to know where, are, where is the answer coming from? Is it coming from the drop down or is it coming from the uh, radio button? So uh, we'll simply do another if CMB rating that selected index it's not equal to negative one then we know at this point that the voting is coming from the drop down so we can simply do uh, the logic for that else we know that the uh, input is coming from the radio buttons now when uh, remember the selected index if it's negative one means nothing is selected but selected index starts from zero when zero is uh, when selected index equals zero, then it means that the first item is selected, which would be the uh, uh, in our in our case it would be the rating number one. Index number one has uh, our rating number two, and so forth. So it's uh, zero based. So um, all we have to do is uh, assign to our record the selected index. So CMB rating dot selected index, but remember it starts from zero, so we have to add a one to it because our rating obviously starts from one, two, three, four, and five. 
uh, we don't start from zero however everything is stored uh, into a zero based array so that's why we have to keep adding one or uh, in order to keep the answers uh, aligned with our um, with our text file which starts from line one basically so uh, that's uh that's the drop down but if it's a uh, if it's the uh, uh, radio buttons then we have to capture which one is being actually used so uh, to do that we will use the uh, checked property uh, if you go to our properties again here uh, there is a property called checked change and it basically will show which one of them is uh, being selected so uh, we will do that in the next video and so stick around and watch the next one